Our life right now really is about getting the boat ready for more seasons of sailing, more destinations. But none of those things are gonna happen today because today, Brett's sick. Currently watching engineering videos mm -hmm. about how to make a spinning top spin faster. Is it that Tom, one? Tom Stanton. With the odd occasion of wanting to miss a social function, there's really never a good time to be sick. But before <laughs> this current brief illness intermission, here's what we've been up to. We are circumnavigating the world by sailboat, but currently we are parked. Well, docked, but same thing. And even though it's a temporary condition, it is a shockingly different way to live than when we were sailing and changing countries just about as often as Jade changes her clothes. Hey, we are focusing our efforts right now on building what we've coined an expedition enclosure. A project three years in the making. I have lots of big plans. Solar Arch, Dean David, solar panels. I want it to be an all-inclusive unit. All-inclusive unit. Since we will be replacing our current soft expired Dodger and therefore the flexible solar panel setup on top, we're seizing the opportunity to build a custom DIY, of course, and epic solar array. Electricity is a massive, crucial part of our off-grid life. And in ideal circumstances, our solar panels would provide all of the electricity we could ever need. But real life circumstances are sometimes less than ideal. And at some point, one realizes the wisdom in redundancy. Which is why one of our recent upgrades was to install a new alternator onto our main engine. One capable of directly charging our lithium battery bank, effectively turning our engine into a backup electricity source. But alas, with everything, there are pros and cons. And while that regulator did work at charging our batteries and preventing them from exploding, that was pretty much all it was good for. Which is why, with those limitations in mind, we're installing a new regulator. As soon as Brett gets over his cold, that installation is at the top of our must-fix list, followed closely by some other arguably important things. For example, the engine, the sails, the furler, the dinghy, the dinghy davits. And while we're busy getting Eva outfitted this summer, Burmese has me covered by sponsoring this video and my summer swimsuit lineup. Burmese gear is made for explorers like you and me. With bold colors, stretchy and comfy material, plenty of support where you need it, and a solid commitment to the planet. Yes, Burmese is made with recycled water bottles. And yes, Burmese donates 10% of every purchase to ocean cleanup. And yes, these are the most comfortable swim trunks I've ever worn. So grab your phone, your laptop, your tablet, and click the link below. But if you're wise, you'll click the link below in the description and use the code EVANS20 and get a 20% discount. No COVID. Room for my dog? It's worth documenting that today is one of the more peculiar happenings in our family life. Brett is sick, and I am not. Yes, that wasn't a threat. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I am going to be fulfilling the role of caretaker today. Usually, almost always, it is Brett taking care of me. So, the goal for today for me is, once Brett's done stretching his legs for the first time in 24 hours, I'm gonna make some soup, but I'm gonna make some extra soup for me to eat tomorrow when Smart. I'm sick. And then, we need to find like a Netflix series. Wait, didn't we watch? Didn't we start a show? Ah, oh, we did. It's really good so far. Invasion. Invasion. Oh, Constellation's the other one too. Yeah. That one's messing with my head. Yeah, we have an Apple TV trial, and so we're watching all of like the Apple TV originals. There's a lot I of good ones. Mostly watch the Masters of the Air, of course. That's why he got the Apple yeah. TV. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. It's a shame I don't feel well. It's like, this is the perfect day. Just a slight breeze blue skies. Once we get all of those instruments and things back installed, then we can go sailing. 
We're pretty close. Very. Yeah, batteries, instruments, control cables. We should probably do our stove box oh, or yeah. something. <laughs> Just a couple little minor things. For whatever reason, long shadows remind me of my childhood. Bye. 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 Acquired chickens. Go. Penny. <laughs> Penny, go with Brett. We are the best spot. The store is so close that you can actually see boat masts from the windows in the store. It's fabulous and definitely spoiling us. But as far as living in an accessible place for doing all of our projects, we definitely found a really good spot and I'm super happy about it. And as soon as we leave here, We'll be happy about that too. I mean, honestly, like whatever it is, whatever chapter it is, we find things to be happy about. Right now, the things I'm happy about, convenient, convenient, convenient. Hopefully we're not sick for very long because we have gotten, it's, it's a bummer to be sick. So I feel like we've picked up momentum and we're like just getting things done so quick on all of our projects. And we're definitely seeing the end of the project season. The weather's getting warmer too. So pretty soon we're gonna be able to start sailing in warm weather. make a bunch of healthy food to help with the sickness, but then also make like unhealthy food, like banana splits. Does that counteract the healthy food? I think I'm gonna make the banana splits regardless because healthy emotions are important. I admittedly went a little bit overboard and suddenly the distance to the marina seems a lot more significant. I went a little overboard as I do. But in my defense, I'm used to having an extra person carrying the groceries. To tell you not to buy so much? Oh. No. Well, also that. Jade's going to make... Wow. Everything's going a little slow in my brain. <laughs> I wish that when we got physically sick that our brains didn't slow down. Because otherwise we could do some planning. You know? Yeah. I did do some emails. That's potentially good. Yeah. <laughs> Appetizer. Yum. Dessert for dinner. Thank you. Okay, I'm sauteing veggies. For Brett, the sick man. I'm spying on you. I feel spied. What are you reading about? It was an ad for V Shred. What is that? It was the guy that you see all over social media that's like, you don't have to do these crazy workouts. You can just, you know, you can eat pizza and still be shredded like me. I'm a celebrity trainer. I always see that guy. I get the guy's things all the time. Yeah. So you clicked on it? Sure. That's, we're just He's a professional, get more, professional we're get more of him fitness now. model, certified personal trainer, and best selling author and creator of Vishred. All right. Said, so it is not sponsored by Vishred. Unless it works really well, then it is. Are you going to do it? Oh, well, I took the quiz, but then I accidentally just hit the back button. So now it doesn't know if I'm a man or woman again. Now I know why we keep getting that guy. Yeah. They're like Brett is the prime target. Eventually, if we keep showing these ads to him, he'll click on them. Sure, that's how marketing works. I think I saw it at least seven times. Eventually, I clicked it. Oh, more couch. This is pretty great. My favorite part is the guy in his 40s. Who's starting to hunch but still has to go to work with this briefcase? There's a guy in the 60s who's got a cane, but he's happy about it. It's giving get rich quick, but definitely for it's apps. get shredded quick. Thank you for being six so that I get a turn to take care of you. Mm, hey, no problem. Hey, wait, put your bowl back out a second. The steam caught the ray. That's fun. That was cool. Yeah, right there, you see it? Yeah. Oh, with that spork. I thought that would make you happy. Yeah. What do you guys think? Do you believe in aliens? I saw this one theory that said the reason that we haven't had interaction with aliens is because we're an intergalactic um, nature preserve. I thought that was kind of funny.
Oh, honey. Come on. Let's brush your teeth and get you in bed for real. I don't know how to get you out of bed. <laughs> There's a lesson in physics. out which of us are sick in the morning. Mm -hmm. Good night. I woke up about, I don't know, right before the sun rose. I am not sick. I'm totally fine. What about you, Brett? Less sick? Less sick. Okay. You're not running a fever at all anymore. Progress? Definitely. I feel great. Snooze the alarm just one time. Thanks to Jade's miraculous, prodigiously impeccable nursing skills, I have been made new. And I'm feeling up for today's new projects, at least for the next 24 hours until I feel like garbage again. And as with most great projects, this one begins with a bit of deconstruction. This time it's miles of wires to get the old alternator regular out, and then I can install the new Zeus, which is an external alternator regulator made by Arco a company known to design and build products with world cruising reliability in mind and who's kind enough to send me their newest regulator to try out. All right. Hope I remember all these wires go. Since I just took off one of the temperature sensors, I might as well reconnect the battery temperature sensor while I'm, while I'm doing it because this came with temperature sensors for battery and alternator. I believe they're the same, they look the same. Hopefully they're the same. Just check in, got the alternator side of things all wired now and even included an extra switch, which it says you can use for something. It doesn't really say what yet, but got that wired. And next I will jump into the engine side of things, which there's a lot more wires and I'm quickly running out of connectors. So hopefully I have enough. It's gonna be close. I just wanted to say, I've never done an install that has an app that walks you through it before, but this is pretty cool and so far, I am very impressed. The wiring is really high quality and it's looking good. I'm, I'm hopeful that this is going to be a very good product. Zeus's job is vital as it's what controls the electricity produced by the engine driven alternator, adjusting the alternator load while taking into consideration engine RPMs, alternator temperature, battery temperature, voltage, and state of charge. And to top it all off, it has built in Bluetooth app interface, NEMA 2000, and CAN bus. Whew, got it mounted. Got it mounted up there. I did talk to the guys at Arco about installing this in the engine bay and they said that's totally fine. So that was my concern. I did consider putting it kind of underneath the sink, but I would have to drill some pretty big holes because these, these are some pretty big size plugs to get through. Almost need like a, a firewall pass through on a car or something like that. But I think that's gonna work. I like it. All of this is just included. 
temperature sensors, but also the wiring harnesses for both the engine and the alternator. And with their app and color coordinated wires, this is something that I should be able to get right. Zeus has the capability of charging batteries 12 to 48 volts and lead acid to lithium iron phosphate using predefined or user defined profiles and has custom switching like the one I just installed to force float mode. Jade, will you please tell the camera what you just did? I managed to cook in this chaos somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of have taken over everything. Okay. So for. I made crepes. But then I put the whipped cream in it. Melted? Well, it wasn't one. It was. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Oh, look at this thing. <laughs> Throw on the clean laundry. Yeah. <sighs> Why isn't Jade helping? Where's Jade in the wall? <laughs> I just installed a dedicated alternator shunt. So now Zeus is wired into both the alternator and the lithium battery shunt and can react to both of them in real time. Last night I got the shunt installed here. This will be the alternator shunt. So I got that. So now I'm just going through and getting all the wiring sorted out. Got the Zeus happily mounted up there and it looks pretty happy up there. I like that mounting spot. Yeah, but right now let's sort out the Don't wiring. I do want to say that while this alternator works, it overheats so fast. And to be fair, I'm sure a lot of that has to do with our cramped, poorly ventilated engine bay. And I'm planning on installing the new Arco alternator once they can get one to me. Their new design should give a bump in rated output up to 275 amps and an increased output even at the lower RPMs, while staying cooler despite our sad engine bay. Still no RPMs, so I'm not really sure on that one. I, I don't know. I don't know if, I'm not sure. I'll have to talk to uh, Arco. It was kind of cool. I, I figured I wired in a switch up there at the console, or up at the helm, that used to be switched so that we could have the fans on, but I wired a relay back in. So now when you turn the ignition to on, it turns the fans on automatically. So now we have a spare switch up there and I put that switch as float mode. So I could just automatically just go to float. So that if we need like, full power, you know, we, we want to take all the load off the alternator. So, we, you know, if we're going through a cut or something, we really, really need all the, the horsepower of the engine. So that's kind of cool. Um, I considered putting another one in there because there isn't a generator mode on this alternator that you can program it so that it will put out um, a lot more amps at lower RPM because you aren't needing the horsepower to drive. You just want to use the engine horsepower to make power. And so I may end up putting another switch in to be able to do that because it would be really nice to have the engine as a spare generator essentially. And the idea being with this regulator and with this alternator that it theoretically can put out 250 amps, which is really all our generator does. And so if this ends up working the way I'm hoping it will, eventually we can get rid of our generator, which is, I mean, that's like a thousand pounds of weight and complexity and all sorts of things. And so that'd be great, but we're gonna get to see how it goes, but now we have to out. It's been a few days since I filmed last on the alternator issue, uh, regulator alternator scenario. And here's the deal. When I was installing the alternator, the positive post, this post right here, sits really close to a part of the engine that is grounded. And when I was putting on the belt, they got too close. They, I, they obviously, they touched, sparked, and I feared that the alternator got fried because once I got it all up and running, the engine was running, it wasn't making power and it wasn't making, or it didn't show any RPM. And so I thought, ah, I killed this alternator. So I went and had it tested. I took it to the shop and they did a test on it. It actually took them two tests because the first test that they did, they didn't test for RPMs. So I was like, no, that's really what I need to know. But then they tested it, it tested good. And the guy that did the testing said, hey, let me know how the install goes on that regulator on the Arco because I'm actually doing that same install for the first time on a boat next week. So uh, I'll have to give him a text and let him know how it goes. 
once once I finish it. But yeah, anyway, so the alternator is good. The regulator should be good. It wasn't connected at the time that the spark happened. So I think I have a pretty good idea of why it didn't work. I'm gonna test that and then I'll let you know. I've enlisted Jade's assistance. We're gonna fire up the engine and I'll stay inside to watch the alternator, make sure the belt is all happy and make sure our settings are good. And fingers crossed, we should charge our batteries. Let's go. <laughs> 2% enthusiasm. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Ready? Wait, wait like 10 seconds and then start it. Okay. So I need to open the hatch. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Well, start it. That's good. Startup delay. No RPMs yet. Soft ramp. That's good. Hey, RPMs! Woohoo! We have RPMs! Yay! So see if you have your RPMs outside. Do you have RPMs? Like less than ten. Like but eight? but there's some. Yeah, eight. Cool. Is that good? Yeah, that's what it is inside too. Woo! What? Yeah, go ahead and put it in neutral and just rev it up a little bit. I'm gonna see how much batter batteries we're making. How much electricities? How much electricity? Yeah, how many electricities are we making? <laughs> Focus. Battery amps, 98. Oh, why did you do that? That was weird. So problems not completely solved. RPMs showed up for a little while, which was better than before, and then went away. Um, my thought was, it was kind of a funny thought, was that the reason why we had nothing before was because the batteries were fully charged. And so I've been draining the batteries a bunch this morning to give some room for charging to be needed. And it seemed like it was working, but then it cut out again. Um, but the, it said the battery voltage was only a 13.1. So I'm not really sure why it did that. That seemed really strange. I found it. We have a blown fuse, and this is the fuse that powers the field current. Progress. The fuse I had in there was a five amp, um, and that obviously blew. I'm gonna put it in a 10. The the ARCO documentation says it can go up to 30, but the wire size that I have on that piece of wire can only do up to 20. So if I need to put in a bigger fuse, then I'll need to up that wire size. So we will try a 10 and see if I can do it. Uh, I just, I don't have, I don't have a 20. Okay, no RPMs yet in the startup delay, so it has to wait until the 30 seconds goes by for the startup delay before it starts. Um, it's RPM 750, 750, 800. The RPMs here, so let's see if we actually start making power. Wow, we are swinging around so much, it's so windy. Hey, alternator amps, 215, 220, 225, 230. This is the most power I've ever made with this alternator. 230 amps. Whew. Let's go. So I just engaged generator mode. This is my is favorite gonna... part. An app that shows all of the techie stats and better yet, all of the programming is done via Bluetooth on your phone or tablet or whatever. And it can integrate into the Victron system seamlessly. Hallelujah, it finally makes sense. 242 amps from the alternator. Oof. Let's see how it does with the temperature. That's a little bit toasty. It's not too hot. It's able to get that hot. That's okay. 
but that's that's hot so we're gonna need to get some fans in there to be able to keep it cool because it's still doing I and mean, it's still doing it 164 amps but it's that's hot but man 164 amps at a thousand rpms yeah the engine sounds happy it likes this I have it at 1100 rpms in generator mode so it's hundred percent duty that's exactly why I wanted this is because that means that now we basically have another generator that thank you Arco I've wanted to miss With the odd occasion of wanting to miss a social, social function. Hey. This hurts. Oh, sorry. Here <laughs> I was being cute. I'll say what Penny instead. What do you think, Penny? Do you think there's aliens? You're so cute in the mornings. With our new electric cooking life, we make a lot of food in our air fryer and on our electric stove, and we're realizing that we use a lot of electricity. <laughs>